Hey there, good morning everybody, welcome. It is uh, April the 1st, 2022, 8.33 in the morning, and we are here in the book of Judges, chapter number 17. So we've got 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. <clears throat> Five days left, uh, and I tell you what, this is going to be it. The book of Judges, you've noticed how my schedule's getting cattywampus, and I went from 10 a.m. real consistently to 8 to 8.30, and my schedule's demands are just really tough. So we're going to finish the book of Judges, and that's going to be it. We'll be done with our daily broadcast, so hopefully that's not too disappointing to you. Uh, judges, chapter number 17. We are not going to find a judge in this chapter. We're actually going to find a man named Micah who is going to start taking Israel in the wrong direction. <clears throat> He's going to establish his own religion. Verse number six, in those days there was no king in Israel and every man did that which was right in his own eyes. So that's what happens here. And we're going to talk about that today. That's our primary principle. Let's go ahead and pray, and we will begin. Father, thank you for these books that we've studied for these many months and even years now. I pray for judges that you'll help us as we conclude this book uh, to understand what's going on. Help us in our daily lives, please. Thank you for the book. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who helps us to understand. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. All right, Judges chapter 17. And there was a man of Mount Ephraim whose name was Micah. And he said unto his mother, the 1100 shekels of silver that were taken from thee, about which thou cursest and spakest of also in mine ears, behold, the silver is with me. I took it. And his mother said, Blessed be thou of the Lord, my son. So this is a really strange way to begin already. We've got Micah of Mount Ephraim. Uh, we've read about the tribe of Ephraim already, how much trouble they were. They were trouble to Gideon. Who else did they cause trouble for? Uh, Jephthah. I think they tr caused trouble for Jephthah. Yeah. And so uh, here, now we've got a young man of Ephraim, and he took 1,100 shekels of silver from his mother. Now, we're about to find in this chapter that 10 shekels of silver was a good yearly wage. Someone could get 10 shekels of silver for a year's labor, and they thought that was healthy payment. So that's 110 years worth of living. So they're set for life, right? 1,100 shekels of silver. So this woman has 1,100 shekels of silver. She's she It's stolen from her. She's angry. She curses whoever took it. And then her son shows up and says, oh, mom, that money, I took that money. So here's a son stealing from his mother, not just stealing from her, but stealing a fortune from her. And then what does she say? Oh, blessed be thou of the Lord, my son. No, no, you don't trust a thief for a son. And when he had restored the 1,100 shekels of silver to his mother, his mother said, I had wholly dedicated the silver unto the Lord from my hand for my son to make a graven image and a molten image. Now, therefore, I will restore it unto thee. So this is really weird. She says, well, I'll tell you the reason I was so angry, because I was going to give you that money in the first place, and I wanted you to make a graven image of our God. Now, it seems that they're trying to make an image not of a false God, although it could be that, uh, just of the Lord himself. Now, we know this is a violation of one of the Ten Commandments, thou shalt make no graven images. So they're already flagrantly violating the Mosaic Law, even one of the Ten Commandments originally. They've got to know this, <clears throat> but they're going to do it anyways. So this weird back and forth, hey, someone stole my money. Hey, mom, it was me. I stole the money. Here, you can have it back. Oh, wonderful, son. You're blessed of the Lord. Hey, you have it back. I was going to give it to you anyway. I want you to make an image of God. And so, verse number four, yet he restored the money unto his mother 
And his mother took 200 shekels of silver and gave them to a founder who made thereof a graven image and a molten image, and they were in the house of Micah. So his mother then takes the money back from him, gives 200 shekels uh, to uh, uh, an artist who then makes a graven image with that 200 shekels of silver. And then they take that image and they put it in the house of Micah. And the man Micah had a house of gods. So now there's more than just Jehovah. And made an ephod and a teraphim and consecrated one of his sons who became a priest. And here's the the key verse of this chapter and even the rest of the book. In those days, there was no king in Israel. But every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Now, what we should be reading is every man did that which was right according to the word of God. See, you don't get the choice to decide what's right and what's not. I don't get the choice to decide what's right and what's not. I hear all manner of excuses from people. Well, this is the way I tithe, or this is the way I witness, or I don't go to church. I go sit in the woods, and I go hunting and fishing. That's my church. No, you're doing that which is right in your own eyes, and it's wrong. It's sin. You don't get to decide. God does, you don't open the Bible and say, hey, here's a list of suggestions for you, but if these don't happen to work out for you, you go ahead and do whatever you want to do, and it'll be just fine. No, you're going to be judged according to that book. When it says about the judgment seat of Christ, the books were opened, one of them is going to be the Bible, and you're going to be judged according to your obedience to the word of God. You don't get to decide. What if what if you got a husband and a wife and the husband decides it's okay for him to commit adultery? Uh, is it okay? No, it's not okay. Ask the wife. She'll tell you it's not okay. Uh, you, you don't get to make these choices. And God doesn't allow you to make these choices. Mike is doing whatever he wants to do. He's forming his own religion. He's creating gods out of, uh, out of silver and gold. He is assigning the priesthood to one of his sons. He's not a Levite. He's from the tribe of Ephraim. He doesn't get to do this. He's creating garments for the priests. That's what an ephod and a teraphim is. So when we start doing whatever we think is right, uh, we're going to get in all sorts of trouble. Verse 7. And there was a young man out of Bethlehem, Judah, of the family of Judah, who was a Levite, and he sojourned there. So you've got this Levite living with Ephraim. And the man departed out of the city from Bethlehem, Judah, to sojourn where he could find a place. And he came to Mount Ephraim, to the house of Micah, as he journeyed. And Micah said unto him, Whence comest thou? And he said unto him, I am a Levite of Bethlehem, Judah, and I go to sojourn where I may find a place. So Micah and this Levite cross paths, and, the, and Micah says, hey, who are you and where are you coming from? He says, well, I'm a Levite, I'm from Bethlehem, Judah, and I don't know where I'm going. I'm looking for the next place God has for me. And Micah said unto him, dwell with me, and be unto me a father and a priest. So now... Micah recruits this random Levite to be his priest in his false religion. I will give thee 10 shekels of silver by the year. So that's that yearly wage of 10 shekels we're talking about. And a suit of apparel. That's the ephod that we're talking about. And thy victuals, a place, or a place to, or food to eat. So the Levite went in. So he agrees. <laughs> Not a very good Levite, is he? And the Levite was content to dwell with the man. And the young man was unto him as one of his sons. So now this Levite starts living this weird fatherly role of this uh, idolater who's building his own religion. It's so strange. But that's what happens when every man decides what is right in his own eyes and what is not. 
That's why people thinking that men swimming in women's college uh, swim meets is, is appropriate because it's whatever they decide is right is what is right. That's why they decide that they can they can teach little children in school about human sexuality. And when I say little children, I mean kindergartners through the third grade. Why are we talking to kindergartners about human sexuality? It's not even on their radar at this point of life. But when you decide to do that which is right in your own eyes, that's what happens. Verse number 12, And Micah consecrated the Levite, by the way, he has no authority to do this. And the young man became his priest and was in the house of Micah. Then look at Micah's twisted reasoning. Then said Micah, Now know I that the Lord will do me good, seeing I have a Levite to my priest. So Micah actually thinks that he's going to have favor from God because he's got a Levite for a priest. Well, no, you don't get to do whatever you want to do. You don't get to create golden idols and images and graven images. You don't get to build your own ephod, build your own temple. You don't get to do this. God laid out for the people what he wanted them to do. And you're flying in the face of all of it. Not to mention, you start the whole chapter out as a thief, stealing from your own mother an absolute fortune. <laughs> Micah gets no credit here from the Lord or from any of us, does he? All right, simple short chapter. We'll pick up with Micah again tomorrow uh, and the Levite. So uh, tune in tomorrow. And uh, oh, remember when I said we're going to finish Judges and then we're just going to quit doing the devotions? April Fools. I'm not going to do that. We don't do that. We finish what we start around here. So just a joke. Uh, every day when we finish Judges, we're going to start a brand new book and we're going to keep going till we cover the entire Bible. All right. That's all that I got for you this morning. Thanks so much for watching. As always, please like, love, and share the post. Let people know that we're out here and I will see you. When will I see you? I'll see you tomorrow morning sometime. God bless you. Have a great Friday.